Hello everybody, welcome to another edition of Sonoran Reef. In this week's video we're going to be talking about the Kessel H80, my product review, and how that affected the pH in my aquarium, and what we're going to do from here. Here we go. Okay, so this is the Kessel H80. Um, this is the new Kessel light that's specifically designed to be in refugiums. Once you open the box, you'll see the light here itself. So the LED on one side, the heat dissipates through the side vents there. Power supply and the mounting bracket, but we'll be throwing that away. This is the manual that it comes with. Okay, we're throwing the mounting bracket away because I got this mounting bracket here. So, here you go, here's the light. Now nobody make fun of my pink screwdriver. It was literally the only one I could find. I have no idea where all of my screwdrivers went, so no making fun of the pink screwdriver. So here I am taking the screws out of the back of the light. This is the location that we're going to attach the uh, mount to. So again, this is a accessory mount. I think it was an extra $25 or something like that. We'll go ahead and screw this into position. not quite lining up, so just having to loosen that one screw. Now again, the reason that I got this light was primarily to get more activity in my refugium and hopefully increasing my pH. Um, this light just came out to the market. Here I am working on the uh, the attachment there that's going to attach to the refugium itself. So, like I was saying, I got this light because I wanted to increase the uh, algae growth in my refugium, hoping to avoid such large pH swings and especially pH dips. So, I've been watching the bulk reef supply video, um, I'm sure many of you have, about. Uh, the benefits of running a refugium specifically can the shado algae uh, take out nitrates and phosphates now my tank doesn't have a huge issue with nitrates and phosphates in fact i hardly have any uh, because of my good filtration system but i really wanted to increase the ph so here we go just finishing up the light here getting the arm put together and here we go not quite working the way I want it to so I'm going to loosen the light just a little bit here so I can get the right situation for putting it in the refugium this is one weird thing there we go all right so that's how it's going to sit in the refugium itself now let's play. As you can see, we have uh, two knobs there on the top. One knob controls intensity and one controls the color. So this has a bloom, you know, kind of coloration, which is more of the red. And then it's got the blue. And we want the grow setting, which is right in the middle, which is the purple. So here we go. We're going to connect it to power real quick. So there we go. We have the uh, intensity. Now let's play around with the color so you can see it goes from a red there to kind of a purple and then into a blue. And again, we're going to want that purple setting once we put it in the refugium. So 
so here's the eShop's light. I've had this sump light for all two and a half years I've had the aquarium. And it was working really, really well in my original refugium. And so I just assumed it would work really well in this refugium. But I wasn't getting nearly the growth. And then I noticed this. A lot of the light was actually hitting the top of the aquarium and bouncing out, not getting into the refugium itself. I think this was one of the major problems. Don't mind all that water. It was for me messing with the refugium earlier. But as you can see, so much light's hitting that black acrylic, it's not getting in. In fact, I put my PAR meter at the bottom of the refugium, and even with the light on, as you just saw, it was showing zero PAR. Now, I was looking for a very specific point, but zero PAR was kind of crazy. The week, this last week I had the eShop slide on, I paid really close attention to my pH. As you can see, I had pH lows of about 7.9 and highs of about 8.1, um, give or take. The average was right around 8, as you can see. Um, I'd like to keep my pH about 8.2 as an average, so certainly this has room for improvement. And my hope is, is that by getting more uh, carbon dioxide oxygen exchange, in the refugium at night, we'll go ahead and get that. So that was my biggest reason for getting this light is just to encourage that carbon dioxide oxygen exchange at night when the main lights are off and hopefully get some stability to this situation to help coral growth and obviously that being the primary factor. But um, so that was my reason for getting the light. So let's uh, take a look now after the light's been installed and see if we got the uh, results we were looking for. All right, so here's how the H80 currently looks in the refugium. There you can see that it's mounted to the sidewall. I've taken the black lid off entirely. I don't need it anymore. The only reason I had that black lid was to mount that eShop's light. So very happy with the install. I think it couldn't be any cleaner. Uh, so again, very excited about that. You can see that I've got that nice intense purple light going into the refugium there. So very happy with the way it mounted. As you can see, there's the Chato. Um, have the light mounted very close to the surface of the water. Try to keep all of the light in the refugium itself. Speaking of that light, here you can see the PAR meter. It's at 46, where you, you guys saw that the eShops light was at zero. I think it's probably much higher than that. I think the eShops was probably higher than zero. But my PAR meter um, had focused right dead center. And um, anyway, here you go. You can see with the lights on, just kind of giving you an idea of how it looks with the lights on. I thought it might be a little bit hard to see with the uh, stand lights off there. And all you seen was that purple light. But again, very happy with the way it's mounted. Again, I think the PAR is probably higher. Here you can see how the pH did that first week. Um, ignore the spike there at the end. Whenever I'm showing you guys uh, pH or any other settings in my aquarium, Saturday is always my aquarium maintenance day and things go a little bit silly. But as you can see, I got a bump right away. Um, not a huge bump, mind you. Uh, not the bump I was expecting, but there's not a lot of chato right now. So I think that had a lot more to do with it than anything else. But I did see an increase. Um, as you guys can see, my average went from just below 8 to just above 8. So that's a plus. Again, I'm a little bit disappointed, but I don't think it's the light. I think it's the amount of chato in the refugium. So we'll be doing a second part of this video in about a month, just kind of showing you now that I've got a little bit more Chato in the aquarium, how that's helping with the pH stability between day and night. Um, but as you can see, it is an increase, which was my goal. Um, getting almost up to 8.2 during the day. Um, and dipping just below 8 at night, uh, 
So um, again, it it did what I wanted it to do, not as much as I wanted it to do, but again, I think that's definitely relating to that small amount of shadow I have in the refugium at this time. I think it will get better over time, and I will do a follow-up video. Um, but again, I don't think that's the light's fault. So, in summary of my review of the uh, Castle H80, um, I think the light is very well put together. I think it does a significantly better job of promoting the correct light spectrum. As you can see, it did give me an increase in my pH, not a significant increase. However, I keep saying it, I think that's due to the amount of Chato, not the intensity or the um, ability of the light to produce the right light spectrum and light intensity. So, um, being an SPS, I mean, as you guys can see, there's my tank, um, and I've got a lot of SPS in it, but that's not the only thing in there. Um, I have green star polyps, I've got um, torch corals, I've got uh, just it's a mixed reef tank. But I do run the Red Sea program, so I keep my magnesium high, calcium high, alkalinity high, and um, even with an alkalinity at, at about 11, which is where I keep mine, I am still struggling with the pH. So this is going to kind of be a throw on to this video. Again, I'm going to do a part two review of the Castle Light uh, in the future, but. Um, kind of going through and watching other people's videos. One thing that I had never really considered doing is um, playing around with my skimmer and where I was pulling the air from that went into the skimmer. And so not being happy with the pH increase that I had in this experiment, I decided to do one more experiment. And I was planning on making that a separate video but it's pretty simple. So we're going to go ahead and include it in this video. And then we'll do a part two of not only the Kessel light, but of this modification to my protein skimmer. So let's take a look and see what we're going to do. So here's my sump. Um, again, the first side of it here. I've taken airline tubing and connected it to my skimmer air intake and brought it back to the back side of the aquarium and it's running out the doggy door currently. So my aquarium does sit on an outside wall of my home. On the other side of the wall is my patio. So it would be very easy to drill a hole through the wall and run the airline tubing directly outside, which is what I'm planning on doing. But before I did that, I just wanted to conduct an experiment to see if this was going to work and did it really make that big a difference to my pH level. I just, I wasn't sure, I didn't think it would. But before drilling a hole in the wall, I wanted to check. So here are the results. This is a week of results. And as you can see, um, I got an incredible uh, increase in my pH. Uh, I'm no longer dipping down. My lows are no longer in the sevens. In fact, my lows are almost 8.1. And my highs are getting right up to about 8.3. Um, I've been running this method uh, almost for a week, but it hasn't been super consistent because every time someone goes in and out that door, they take the airline tubing out of the doggy door. Um, when the dogs go in and out, they knock it. So um, it hasn't been super consistent, but the results are to the point where I know this is going to make a significant difference. And once the airline tubing is running directly out of the wall, right behind the aquarium, and that airline length is shortened, I think I'm even going to get better results. So very happy with these results. The average, as you can see there, is about 8.15. My goal is 8.2. So uh, I'm making significant increases to that pH level. Between this and when the Chato continues to grow on my refugium, I think I'm going to be very, very happy uh, with this pH uh, solution. So 
uh, again, I didn't think it would make that big a change, but it made a bigger change than even the new Castle Light did. So if you guys are having issues with increasing your pH and there's any way you can vent your protein skimmer outside, uh, it sure does make a huge difference. So what are my final thoughts here of the Kessel H80? Again, I've kind of already gone over these, but I wanted to go over them one more time since this is a product review for that light. I think the light's fine. I think it does exactly what it's supposed to do. I think it's intended for refugiums. Um, and not only am I curious to see how this light progresses over the next couple of months as the amount of Cheto in my tank hopefully grows, but um, I'm interested in also following the uh, bulk reef supply video as they're now just starting to test this light. They always do a great job, and I'm curious to see what their results are in comparison to my own. Um, but if you guys are thinking about purchasing this light uh, for the purposes of lighting your refugium, I think it would be a great option uh, for you. My refugium is about 18 inches by 18 inches. And I think if you're looking to light an area of that size, it would be a, a great light for you guys to use. So uh, I also think kind of the part two of this video, I think that um, if you have the ability to pull air from outside, I think it's definitely a wise choice if you guys are struggling with pH. Um, I thought my pH was doing fine for a long time. It wasn't until I went and calibrated my probes that I realized what I thought was a pH of 8.2 was really a pH just below 8. So definitely make sure you're always calibrating your probes at least every six months would be my recommendation to you. I hadn't calibrated mine in a while and um, I was very surprised not only that my aquarium's pH wasn't where I wanted it to be, which explained a little bit of my coral growth slowing down, but um, I just, I really am surprised that a couple dollars worth of airline tubing can make such a significant difference. So obviously if you have a huge aquarium like this and you can't vent it outside because of its location, they do make uh, scrubbers that you can connect um, to your intake line to scrub the carbon dioxide out of the air before it goes into the aquarium. But um, if there's any way you can vent it to an outside wall, it is such a simple fix to help keep your pH up. Again, I'm keeping my alkalinity at like 11, so I really don't want to bring it any higher to try to increase that pH. But um, with venting outside, it seems to just be the perfect solution. And hopefully the refugium uh, will keep the stability at night and um, also generate uh, microfauna and copepods and stuff for the tank. But I really think that a couple dollars worth of uh, tubing is going to be the big difference in keeping the pH of this aquarium where I'd like it to be for maximum growth. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was a longer one. Thank you for staying with me until the end. Uh, I really do appreciate it, um, and we'll be doing some more videos here in the near future. Um, we have, just as a reminder, we have videos coming up not only uh, next week. We should be able to take the um, next batch of fish out of the quarantine tank and uh, introduce them into the uh, Sonoran Reef. But we're also doing the videos here in the next couple of weeks on if a healthy reef tank can cure hell or hell algae. My goodness, it is hell algae, but most of us call it hair algae. Um, hair algae in an aquarium that is suffering from it. We are in our third experiment with that, and uh, the results look promising. But uh, want to do a couple more tests before we know for sure yet. And we're working on a couple other videos as well, so please stay tuned to the channel. If there's anything that you would like us to test for you or experiment on, please let us know. Again, thank you for watching, and um, we'll see you next week.